The allegation you failed to appear for drug testing on November 16th and November 18th. How do you plead? Guilty. To the allegation you failed to submit to a PBT on November 16th. How do you plead? Guilty. To the allegation you failed to appear for group therapy at the Guidance Center the week of 11-11. How do you plead? Guilty. And the allegation you failed to test as directed on 11-19. How do you plead? Uh, guilty. Matt, can you scoot over? Yes. All right. I just want to be able to see you, Dad, while we talk about this. All right, I'm going to accept the pleas as knowing and voluntarily given. It's my understanding, Kyle, that you had previously denied all of these allegations. You had a really colorful story about how you went to the group meeting on Saturday and how you had, I mean, the lengths you would go to to be dishonest are really like, they're pretty extreme. Making fake logs to show your dad so he do doesn't think you have to test on a day. And I mean, it's, it's just very extreme. What's going on? Um, I've always sort of had an issue with being dishonest. Um, and when I get into that fight or flight, I guess that's the first thing that I tend to run to. Yeah, but you're bad at it. I'm terrible at it. I mean, you're not. You're like, you trick him for a little while. Mr. Keys is no dummy. No. Right? And I think your dad loves you. And I know your dad's been through a lot with you. Mm -hmm. And he wants to see the best in you. Mm -hmm. So he believes it. But Matt's going to figure it out. And then you're going to get called out again. Okay. And you're just making it worse. How many days did you drink? Just the one night. Friday, Friday, Friday night, Saturday, early Saturday morning, just that one day. Where'd you do it? No. Would you stop on your way home from work? Yeah. What'd you get? I got a pint. Of? Vodka. And then you went home. Did you go in your room? Mm -hmm. Where was your mom and your dad? They were in bed. So you go in your room, you just drink this pint of vodka straight? Basically. What time at night did you go into the store? Uh, it was probably like 11.45-ish. What are some things you could have done? Could have talked to my father who was awake probably from that during that time. Could have called Patrick. Could he would have answered. Could have called Jermaine. He would have answered. They'd have answered your call at 11.45. I know Patrick would have. And I have other people that I could have called to. You've been going to these meetings. You've been making some relationships. It's like the level of self-sabotage here today between you and Dewan. It's like I, I'm just completely flabbergasted with it. I, I don't even, I can't even yell at you. I'm just so utterly progress. And now you have to start all over again. Do you even want this? Do you yes. want this? Yeah. Because we've got three inpatients, right? Two. Uh, in your life? <laughs> oh, yeah. My, three. Yeah. Three, but two in the last year. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I can't, we can stay on you. Your dad can stay on you. You have, like, one of the best parents I've ever seen in my life. I agree. And they don't deserve this, and you're killing them. Mm -hmm. But... I mean, Kyle, I just don't know what to do. I, I, I mean, I can give you this sanction, but like, you know, I was worried because you got out of out, you got out of IOP. You were getting the tether off. You were getting promoted at phase. Like your mom came in and they were so proud. Everyone was so proud. And I was so worried. And we had discussions about this, about like, is this too much at once? Should we keep the tether on for a little longer? But it's like you had earned it. You had earned the right to like have it off. But we were wrong. And it's like, I can't have Matt call your dad every day to find out if you're lying. <clears throat> I understand that. I mean, like, the, we shouldn't have to. I mean, we had a meeting, and when we find out about this, I said, call dad. 
And it's like, oh, because we know the answer will be abundantly clear because he gets one story and we get another. All we do is call dad. You're doing two days in jail. Matt's agreed to allow you to turn yourself in Sunday at what? Eight o'clock. A.M.? Yes. Tuesday? A.M.? Tuesday? Sunday? Mo Sunday so, night? Monday night? So he has an appointment with Josh at 4 o'clock on Monday, which I think would be probably beneficial for him to be able to attend um, if you're in agreement to allowing him getting out early on Monday at 2, 3 o'clock in order to attend that. Okay. It's a scram getting back on. You're keeping it on. Don't ask for it off. It's part of you now. Understand. Um, you're going to submit an essay about the importance of honesty and recovery. You're going to seven meetings a week. You're going to every every day. You're going to a meeting. Okay. And you're going to at least two of them. How many meetings a week do you go to with Patrick? Um, just one right now. Then. Oh, you're going to have to call Patrick and find a second one. Yeah. Okay. Is he still your sponsor? Yeah. Two per week with Patrick. I think it's important to know, and I told Mr. Clark this, that the, the sanction relative jail is primarily related to the dishonesty and certainly not the use because the use we we work towards figuring out why and how to make it better uh, but that the uh, the jail has to do with the dishonesty it does i think he understands that and i mean just the extent of the dishonesty yeah. i mean like i don't even know how you created those fake screenshots for your dad i mean like that the amount of effort if you put kyle if you put the amount of effort into your recovery, the way you do to lie when it comes time to lie, like you'd be doing great because I, I don't even know how you did that. And if you would say, you know what, when you think about stopping at the liquor store, knowing how much damage it's going to do to your recovery, to your family, to you, you know, you start to look so much better and healthier. You know, you're working again, like you have all of these things going wrong and it's on you. I mean, and you have to, you got to own some of this. And Mr. Fanto was right. Like the goal is recovery, right? But like, we can't want this for you more than you. You have to do the work and you have to make, there are times when you have to make decisions. And before you go to the liquor store, you at least deserve, or you're, you deserve it. The people that you love deserve it. You should at least call Patrick, call your sponsor and see if he can talk you out of it. And I know the reason you're not calling him is because you don't want to be talked out of it. Right. I mean, you knew there was choice, there were choices, but you got to do it. I think part of it was shame too. I know, but everybody has urges in the program. And if you would have just called Patrick, he might've been able to talk you out of it or at least made you think a little longer. And maybe you'd have said, you know, I'm just going to drive home. And if you would have called him or anyone and said, I'm sitting in the parking lot of a liquor store and think about going in, you have all of these people that would have cheered you on and like made you remind you that you could do this, but you have to make the contact. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. Yeah.